A very special guest is Councilwoman and Speaker Melissa Mark Vivarito. Welcome once again to Reaching Out. Thank you always for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. You just had your recent uh, State of the City address, and at that address you made uh, several major criminal justice initiatives. Can you share with our audience those initiatives? Well, there's several, right? We've been making criminal justice reform in general kind of a priority of mine personally, but obviously the council as well, working with my colleagues. Uh, We recently had rolled out this uh, Criminal Justice Reform Act, which is a series of uh, pieces of uh, bills that we're going to introduce, that we're going to put forward to kind of really uh, revisit the way that low-level nonviolent offenses are looked at, right? We believe that there are some offenses on the books right now. Prime example that I always like to give is being in a park after dark, that if you do get stopped and if a police officer does issue you uh, some type of a summons, it could become, you could be jailed and you can actually have a permanent criminal record for being in a park after dark. It's a low level, nonviolent offense. Mm-hmm. So there's other situations like that where we're trying to minimize um, the level of, of involvement with the criminal justice system, but still get some sort of a, a, a summons, a civil penalty instead of a criminal one. So that's one aspect of the work that we're doing. Obviously, we continue to engage at the state level uh, to have 16 and 17 year olds tried in family court as opposed to being tried as adults. Uh, and there is this issue that we've been talking about with regards to Rikers Island and, and talking about creating a commission. Again, we don't have the answers. The commission is right. to take an independent look at the situation at Rikers and figure out ways that we can address the concerns, the violence that exists, trying to really downsize the population at Rikers, uh, being able to redirect people um, who are awaiting trial, that they don't have to stay in Rikers unnecessarily, looking if there's alternatives to incarceration. So Chief Judge Lippman, uh, who just retired recently because he had reached the age, uh, is going to lead this commission, a highly respected individual, who has agreed to work with us to really take a look, an aggressive look, at Rikers and um, see what recommendations we can come out with, a blueprint. And yes, part of the thinking will involve uh, potentially if closing down Rikers is an option. Now, when you mentioned the uh, 16 and 17 year olds, uh, maybe perhaps not being tried as adults, we're talking about uh, according to what they do, right? Because right. I mean, like serious crimes like murder, we're not going to look at that. I mean, there's we're only one of two right. states in the nation that continues to um, try 16, 17 year olds as adults. So we believe that we should follow the lead. Uh, the New York, New York State and New York City um, usually is, is at the forefront of certain things. On this one, we're not. We're only one of two states that continues to try them as adults as opposed to figuring out, you know, having them tried in family court, for instance. So that's something that we want to continue to look at and we're going to continue to push. That's obviously something that has to be done at the state level. We don't have the authority as a city to do it. So we would like the state to take a look at that. So other states uh, try the uh, 16, 17 year olds if they commit murder as uh, in family court? Yes. I mean, remember, there's different emotional, developmental Mm -hmm. issues when you're talking about children. So we want to make sure that we do follow that lead. We don't think that that's the best way um, to deal with our children is to try them as adults in that case. We probably believe that there's other levels of support and other ways that they can be addressed. um, And that would be through the family court structure. Now, um, Rikers Island, say hypothetically, and I know you're going to have a commission. Yes. If you close Rikers or you redirect redirect uh, people, do you have places to redirect them, or that's all according to what the commission comes up? That would be part of it. So, so the idea here is right. There's things that we're already putting in place. There are things that the mayor uh, and the commi- and the commissioner of the Department of Corrections are already implementing some reforms. But we also are. I announced last year in my state of the city a bail fund. There are basically people who are being held at Rikers Island for low-level nonviolent offenses as they await trial seven to eight days. For instance, so you and I Mm -hmm. may be um, uh, accused, and again, it's accused, not convicted. You're accused of the same crime that you, you and I, but because you can pay bail, you can get out and await your trial outside of Rikers. If I'm poor and I can't pay that bail, 
I'm going to sit in Rikers seven to 10 days. So we're going to implement that bail fund shortly. That's going to help reduce a certain number of people sure. that are at Rikers. Uh, we, we deal with the Criminal Justice Reform Act, which I talked at the beginning, and how you handle low-level criminal offenses. You would have a less number of people at Rikers. If you keep implementing these reforms and you downscale the number of people at Rikers, you could get to a point where you could address um, people at a local level, maybe at a local borough jail or alternative to incarceration programs locally. Those are the kinds of things that the commission is going to look at okay. uh, and, and basically really figure out ways that those issues could be addressed at a more local level. We spend way too much money. Families uh, spend over a day if they want to visit somebody at Rikers. We spend $25 million a year transporting uh, people from Rikers to the different courts, et cetera. There's inefficiencies that exist mm -hmm. in the current system that we want to look at. And also a part of that, one of the things that I mentioned last week also was the issue of a video visitation program. So allowing family members, children to interact with those that are incarcerated at Rikers through video visitation as opposed to having to spend a full day uh, going and figuring out if you can get in to Rikers to visit your loved one. This is a way somebody could go to a local library and visit through teleconference, for instance, and that father could read mm -hmm. to his son or daughter, that family member could interact with their son or daughter. So we're trying to figure out ways um, to, to address this issue from different angles. Well, those are very innovative ways. I mean, I can see the money that you're going to save. Correct. I, I hear the uh, lives that you're going to impact. Correct. Those people can visit their family members. Right. It's a very good concept. I mean, you know, the problem is, and obviously people that commit crimes and are convicted, we need to address that. And this is not talking about giving people a pass in any which way. The reality, though, is that we can't. We also have to humanize the people, right, that are incarcerated. They're, they eventually come back to our communities. Do we want them to be hardened, that they don't get, can't get a job and they can't contribute positively to our right. community? Or do we want to figure out ways where we can engage them and maybe provide them with skills so that when they reintegrate into our communities, they're contributing positively? We don't want to break people down. We want to right. figure out if there's ways to work with people and get them to a point where they can then reintegrate and become productive citizens in our communities. That's the way we should be looking at criminal justice reform, not just from a punitive angle. Um, so that's kind of the things that we're, we're looking to do. Uh, as you know, Local 237 represents the employees of NYCHA. We mentioned that earlier. And many of our members live in the developments. We are also concerned about improving security, living conditions in NYCHA housing, and also maintaining what is New York's largest affordable housing program. I mean, yes, I, I represent the most public housing in the city of New York between my district in East Harlem and the South Bronx. I represent over 20,000 units of housing. That's a lot of That's constituents. Lot of units, yes. and, and so it is a priority of mine and of my office to really focus on this. And the number one request that I get from my tenant associations is security cameras, is figuring out ways that we can make our developments more secure. So that is something that is constantly, we've worked very actively with NYCHA. NYCHA and the administration have focused on certain developments, whether it's the higher crime rates, and put a lot of resources in there, engaging youth um, program, pro, um, programs to engage our young people, uh, whether it's lighting or taking out the scaffolding. There's been a lot of focus on particular developments, and we're supportive of that. Um, we think that we will need to provide as many opportunities to our young people to engage positively and provide alternatives. But the developments themselves, yes, the city council is really the major provider of the security cameras in our NYCHA developments because of the, the, the constraints that NYCHA has when it comes to resources and money. They'd rather put it into improving the quality of life of the apartments and the physical structure, and they don't have as much money left over to provide for security cameras or other measures to make it the secure. So we, they rely on us a lot for that partnership, and we're going to continue to be true partners with NYCHA on that. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this segment of Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teams. Says our very special guest was Councilwoman Speaker. Melissa Mark Viverito. Thank you for, Thank you for the once invitation. again coming on, reaching out. Thank you.